Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi, Mesech HaSchul and Daf Pe'evav. We begin 13 lines from the top of the Yomit. Back to that story where Rabbi Chia, the great Rabbi Chia, encountered some trouble, some parasites lingering in his pishtan, in his flax that was soaking in the pool. He went to his uncle, Rabbi, Rabbi Danos, who gave him some sound advice into how to um, cleanse his material from these parasites. Here comes the question. What are these... Uh, Parasites doing at all in Reb Chia, the great tzaddik Reb Chia's uh, possessions. Umi nafal leyaniva. Can it be so that the aniva, this worm, ends up bekitne in his flax? A, t- a tzaddik's righteousness is meant to protect his environment and certainly his own possessions. Vama rabban bar Abba, he taught us. Vamrilo, some say it was Ame Rabbi Aben bar Shvo Misha Olu bnei Hagoyla when the Bnei Agoli, those from Bavel, came up there to stroll. This was in the middle of Bayez Sheni. Guess what? The calamity stopped. Paskuha Zikin. Zikin are the, uh, the um, meteorite uh, you know, attacks. They stopped. As voice, earthquakes, or ruches, damaging winds, were um, and thunders. Nor did their wine sour. Pishtanam. They're Pishtan. There you go. Did not get ruined. So all these things were preserved because of the tzaddikim. Who are the tzaddikim that arrived at that time? V'nosnu chacham e'neim. Chacham placed their eyes, meaning they attributed these things to the great men that just arrived, the recently arrived tzaddikim, who were Rebbe Chia. There you go, Rebbe Chia So they protected the whole land. Certainly their own things. Says the Gemara, ironically not. Ki mehan yizchusayu, their schus and their righteousness only protected the alma, only impacted their environment, their community. But... For themselves, added who loy doesn't help themselves. Rashi explains. Rashi has two words: Baha'i Alma in this world. A tzaddik's uh, reward is reserved for eternity in the next world. Hashem does not want the tzaddik to lose any, any, even a minute amount of schar that's reserved forever and ever by paying him off a little in this world to so nothing. They gain and benefit nothing in this world, and they, in fact, they can encounter troubles. So they protect their community, but they themselves. Are not immune. Kid Ravid Amarav, as per Amar Ravid Amarav, Amar Ravid Amarav, bechol yom v'yom on every uh, on a daily basis, Baskol, a heavenly voice, which some people can hear, Yoyt says v'yimeres, calls out as follows: Kol ha'olam kula, the entire world, Nizayin, is being sustained by the great tzaddik, Rabbi Chanina ben Doisa. He calls down the blessing. Bishvil, some say Bishvil is like a shvil, a pathway. He's the pathway. He's the conduit. Chanina b'ni, my son Chanina, he's the conduit of blessing. But he himself? Chanina b'ni, he subsists on barely nothing. Dailoi, for him it's enough. Bekav cheruven, a small measure of carob. Me'er of Shabbos per week. Me'er of Shabbos, that was Shabbos from Shabbos to Shabbos. Rashi says, Mesparnes b'tzar. He has barely has what to live on. It's all waiting for him for Elam Habo. So everybody else, yeah, but he himself. Lives a purely spiritual life. Continues the mission. Cheresh shayte v'katan. So back to Kisi Adam. In order to trigger the mitzvah of Kisi Adam, we have to have a proper shechita, an edible shechita, meaning it produces edible material. Let's say we have an unqualified shaykh, the cheresh deaf mute shayte, mentally unstable v'katan, a minor, who committed, who executed shechit. Now. If you recall back from that base, they're not really supposed to do this. But if there is supervision, there's somebody looking over it, there's a mashkiach who ensures that it was a proper shechita, then in fact, it is considered a proper shechita, and you can eat from it. But otherwise, you never know, right? If it was a proper shechita, and you can't really eat the, uh, the basr. Okay, so cheiru shayta v'kan sheshachtu, who did shechita, under supervision, v'acherim and others, Roy and Eisen were watching them, during the process, chayv lechasos. In this case, the flesh is edible. So kosher shechita, and you have to do kisi adam. But benanah ben atzman, if they did it in private, then we assume that the shechita that they attempted went awry. So uh, they can't, you can't eat it. It's not an edible shechita, and it uh, does not require kisi adam patam lechasos. And the same exact would apply to the question of Oyseves Benoi, right? If you slaughter a mother animal, you can't slaughter the baby animal within the day. 
So let's say the first one was done by a katan. Does it have validity? Do you have to wait a day for the offspring? Or do you say, no, just discount what he did. It's worthless. It's a non-starter. The same exact would apply there. So if these unqualified individuals did the shechita under supervision, so it's a valid shechita, and you have to wait a day to follow up with the offspring. But let's say they did it in private. Rameer Matr, Lishchet Achreim. He says, uh, yeah, Rameer says you can check the uh, offspring right then and there because we assume the first Shechita was a non starter. Vachachamim Oisrim. He said, no, just in case, maybe, just maybe, the Shechita of a was a successful Shechita. You have to reckon with it and you have to wait a day to do the uh, the offspring. Now, Umaydim all agree, Shim Shachat, even the Chacham will say, hold back from doing the offspring on the same day, but if he did, if he proceeded, you never know. You can't punish him. Shaina Saifikas Arbaim does get Malkus. Because after all it's an uncertainty. It's in doubt. We don't know whether the first Shita was valid. Now, if you realize the Mishnah has two parts, right? There's first issue is Kisi Hadam. And over there the Mishnah says, Well if the cotton did it in private, no need to do Kisi. There's no Machlaikas there. It seems like all agree. Whereas in the safe one, the next part, we have Oisev as Benoi. A cotton did it. We have Machlekes. Romero says, um, it's, not a, it's presumed to be a non, non, non-valid shechita, ineffective shechita, and go ahead and shech the offspring right then and there. Chachamim forbid. So the question is, why did the uh, Chachamim only challenge Romero in the Oisev as Benoi issue? If there's any you know, doubt involved, is any uncertainty that maybe just maybe it was a valid shechita, then they should have applied that concept to the first case as well. Well, you know, maybe do kisi adam, just in case it was a proper shechita. Rabbonam says the Gemara. Why do they not challenge Ramir and the Rasha regarding kisi adam? Why do they not obligate kisi adam just in case it was a valid shechita? Who might not say for the plea, whereas in the safe, they do present their opposing view that you have to, you know, be stringent regarding Oisif Esbenai just in case. What's the difference? Says the Gemara like this. You know, we don't want people, we don't want the observer who's observing this whole scene to deduce in any way that it was a proper shechita and that might encourage him to go and eat the meat, thinking that it was a proper shechita. So, yeah, if you go and you obligate kisi adam, the observer will say, oh, it must have been a good shechita, let me eat it. Not realizing that really it's a problematic shechita. So that's why we don't proceed with Kisi Adam. We don't want to give any impression that it was a valid Shechita, but in the Sefer, what are we doing? We're just sitting passively. We're saying, listen, Shechita and the mother was done a minute ago. Just hold back. Don't do the offspring until tomorrow. That's not a... That's not a statement in any direction because the observer will say, listen, he's not hungry. He's not Shechitim because he doesn't have what to Shechit. Since you're taking a passive stance, that doesn't really add validity to the experience. Okay, so that's the difference. Reisha, the first case of Kisi Adam, we don't do kisi adam, because otherwise the Amrin and Chayav and the it will obligate you to do kisi Amri, so the person watching will say, oh, apparently it was a valid shechita, shechita mal yisai, and they go eat the meat. V'asil mechel b'shechitas, and they'll eat the shechita of the kata. So we don't do that. As opposed to, oh, says the Gemara, oh, first we'll get, well, first we'll be a kash and a terrace. Well, says the Gemara, okay, if you're worried about the observer, coming to the wrong conclusion, say for Nabi, so in the case of the Oisav Esbenoi, that you're, Withholding, you're waiting a day for the next shechita. Even the Kamen Rabban wants Rabban to tell us also lishchadachrim. You can't do the offspring immediately after the mother animal. Amri people might conclude erroneously shechita maliyosei that the first one was a proper shechita. Once again, they'll eat the meat. Va'asilu mechum shechita. They'll eat the shechita of the cotton. Oh, says the Gemara. There is a big difference between active and passive. Seifa, in the uh, Seifa where you're just holding back from doing shechita. Amri the observer will say, Ah, bisra de lo He doesn't need any meat, so he's not shechting won't necessarily provide any, you know, statement to the contrary. As opposed to, oh, it's a Reisha Nami. I would go back and forth. So in the Reisha as well. What's the big deal? Just cover the blood. You're trying to clean up. Who says it's Kisi Adam? Maybe just trying to clean up your yard. How many people will say, to clean up his yard, who's trying to do that? Yeah, that's good if it's in the yard. So you can explain that he's trying to be clean. But Chachat Ba'ashba, let's say he does a Shechit out in the dump where cleanliness is not a factor. And he still goes and does Kisi Adam. That might send the wrong message. So that's why we delete the whole Kisi Adam. Michael, man, what are you going to do there? Or Bali Malech. 
suppose after the uh, shechita of the cotton, uh, you know, they come to ask the rov, the bezin, should we cover the blood or not? So in that case, if we tell him to do it, Michael Lemeber, what are you going to do there? Meaning, if we obligate him to do kisui, the person standing by will say, oh, kisui means it was a proper shechita, I'll go eat the meat. And that's why we do not do kisui. Says the Gemara Tamech, according to your uh, thinking, say So what about the next case? Oisev es benoi. The cotton shechta the mother. Boli molech. Now somebody comes to the bed and say, could I shecht the offspring today? And we tell them, no. Again, that's a statement in support of the first shechita. That sort of validates the first shechita. So back to the same problem. Michael, remember, what are we going to do there? You're right, says the Gemara. Let's back off from this whole approach. The Rabbanon really maintain their position all throughout the Mishnah. So just like in the Yosef uh, Benoit issue, they say, you never know, it may have been a good Shechita, be careful, don't do the sun now. The same with Kisi Adam. Just in case it's a proper Shechita, we do Kisi Adam. Ella, rather, Rabbon, Akula, Milsa, Pligi, really, they're challenging the entire set of issues, first and second. But they just waited patiently until Rameer finished, and then they went back and they argued. If not really the Rameer, they wait, waited for Rameer, Ad, the Masak, Lela, Milsa, until he finishes his whole presentation. According to Rameer, it's not a shechita, definitively not a shechita, whether it's regarding Kisi Adam, whether Oisev Es and once he concluded his presentation of Ahad or Pligil, yeah, then they came back and they argued on him, but really their argument, their disagreement pertains to both cases. Okay, so, um, we do Kisi Adam just in case, and we don't shech the offspring on the same day. Okay, now let's try to analyze the Machlekes. You mean, we're not really sure what's going on. I mean, the cotton did the shechit. There's no way to determine whether it was successful or not. So, I understand the Rabban are taking a stringent approach. We don't know, just in case. So, when we don't know, when we're in doubt, we do without, right? We're machmer. So, don't shech the offspring until tomorrow. Do kisi adam, just in case. El Rameir, my time, but Rameir is taking a very strong stance. He's saying this is, a, this is like an avela, it's a dead animal, worthless proposition. For sure. How does he know for sure? Maybe uh, the kid got lucky and did a proper shechita. My time. Amr Rabbi Yaakov, Amr Rabbi Yechon, Mechayev Hoi Rameh Al Shechitos Mishun Nebeila. Listen to this. Rameh considered their shechita like a Nebeila. As if the animal dropped dead. And if one eats that meat, he gets Malchus. No kidding. No, there's no doubting. There's no Suffolk. Whoa. So according to Rabbi, there is no Suffolk according to Rameh. Of course you don't do Kisi Adam. Of course there's no issue of Yosef Espanoi. Now, next question is why? How? How do we come to such a conclusion? How can we be so certain that it was really a failed Shechita? My time, Amra Ba'ami, Choyl V'roiv Maseh and Mikul Kalam. Majority of cases would be a failed Shechita. So we follow the majority fact. That's a, a legal concept, Roiv. Majority. In which case we could determine definitively that it's an Avela. Amalei Rapap, Larafun Be'Rishua. Probably some say it was a Rav Shul who turned it off Papa. I, I understand your point. But even, you know, the truth is, even without going that far and saying that it's Roiv, you can still come to the same conclusion that it's an Avela. Even if it was not Roiv, even if it was only 49% mess ups, you can still end up with a Avela status. Why? My area Roiv. Why bother with Roiv? Why do you have to go there? I feel Vietnam, even if it's only 49% failure, failure rate. It would still be considered an avela. You know why? You see, because the animal had a chazaka, an established status of isr during its lifetime was asr because it was Avram and Achai, a live animal. So we have the chazaka pointing in the direction of isr. We have the forty-nine percent failure rate on the cut and shechita again heading in the same direction of isr. So combine the two. If we join the two factors, that concludes that it's us, as we find elsewhere, that we can combine, we can join together a miyot with a chazaka to draw a conclusion. I feel we know, there are miyot. First of all, a mayor throughout Shaz is concerned about even a minority element. We find that by yivim, right, that a child shouldn't do yivim, may, may, may turn out to be a sterile, a sterile, whatever, we're concerned even about small percentages. So, miyot is not non-existent, it's there. It can't necessarily carry the day. But if you combine it with Chazaka, then it could carry the day. 
and can determine the status of this animal and make it an avela. Smoich, connect. Link, miyuta, the miyut factor, the chazak, the chazaka factor. Vishle ruban, that undoes the roiv. So let's say roiv says the cotton did a proper shkita, but miyut was not a proper shkita, plus chazaka, which pairs up with the miyut, you end up with a definitive conclusion that it's an avela. And we find this halacha elsewhere, this now we have a Mishnah, Tinuk, Shinimsa, Bitsada, Isa, you have a toddler who's lingering near the uh, dough. But like we you see a clump of dough in his hand, so he certainly touched the, uh, the dough, right? Remain retired. Now the concern is that the toddler, very often, you know, roams around, touches, you know, garbage, whether you, you have uh, things which are tummy, creatures that are dead. So Rameir says, no, Rameir Matar, he says the dough is considered okay. He says the dough is tummy. Why? Because regularly the child, uh, you know, uh, mess, uh, touches the uh, place with the garbage where there are uh, tumma items. And then subsequently he went and uh, transferred the tumma to the dough. But I mean, and the question was, my time to remain, why does Rameir say the dough is safe? Oh, because we have a miut with a chazaka playing in favor of the dough. Because somebody holds roif to negis metapchen. True. In the majority of cases, kids, you know, play with the garbage. Umiyut ain't metapchen. There is a small percentage, a minority factor, that, uh, you know, that don't. Okay, so you've, uh, there's a factor in favor of the dough that the child did not contract any tumor. That's number one. Number two, there is a chazok, an established to her status that the dough had until now. This dough had an established chazok of tahara. It was presumed to be tar until now. So join together the cheskas tar with the miyot of children that do not interact with tumma, we turn tumma base. Smoich miyot al chazaka, pair up the miyot with the chazaka, basically ruban, that challenges the, uh, the raiv and uh, saves the dough. So do the same over here by the uh, animal. Now due to this uh, you know, dual factor, we'll assume that the shkita of the cotton was worthless, and then you can go shech the offspring on the same day. So the more you can compare you know, um, tumma issues, which is the subject matter by the dough, which runs its own, you know, set of parameters, its own rules, versus uh, issues of Isser, of, of Isser Veheta, which has its own system, its own, you know, uh, uh, um, set of rules. Im Amru Suffolk Tumma Latar. Just because when it comes to the question of Tumma, we consider it to be tar due to these factors, we can't apply the same to an issue of Isser. Yamru Suffolk Isser Lahata will permit a case of, a, of, a, of a uncertain Isser. And, and you can't, you know, you can't compare the two contexts, and therefore, the only reason why, in our Mishnah, we say it's a non-starter, that the Shkita of the Katan is just totally neglected and, and discounted, is because we have a rave saying so. Most likely, the Katan, um, you know, was unsuccessful in his attempt. Okay, so in any case, we have a Cheir Shait of a Katan attempting a Shkita, without supervision. Rameir says, Nevela, forget about it. The Chacham say, well, we're not sure, we have to go to Chum. What's the conclusion? What's the Psaq Allah? Hoira, Rebbe, so Rebbe, Rabbi Danasi, ruled in line with Shita's Kareb Meir. Hoira, Rebbe, Kachachamim. At a different time, Rebbe sided with the Chachamim. Now, which one was the, you know, the most recent one, which is the most definitive one, right? Hai, Minai, which one of these rulings, Dachrisa, was the last one? Tashma, we proved from the following story. Rabbi Abba, Breder Cheba Abba, so he, and also Rabbi Zera, these two Tzadikim, Habu Kaimi, they were standing, Bishuk of the Kisri in the marketplace of Caesarea. And where were they? Apischa de Bemedrasha. It was in the town of Kisri at the uh, doorway of the Beis Hamedesh, right outside the yeshiva. While the, you know, the session was going on inside. They were standing outside. Nafak Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Ami came out. Ashkechin, who encounters these Chacham outside, he says, what are you doing outside? Why don't you come inside and join the discussions? We could have benefited from your presence, from your clarity. Amr Lui tells them, Lev Amin Luchu, haven't I already told you in the past, Be'id Ben Midrashim, when this session is, 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 is going on in the base of Medrash, don't stand outside. Look to Kimu, don't stand up right outside. Dilma, perhaps Ika Inish, perhaps is a, a member of the base of Medrash, to Mitzdar Chalishmaita, who needs some clarity in his learning, and uh, what you can provide, but Asla Trudi, and they'll, you know, just, uh, they'll be confused. They won't have their clarity. Okay, so Rabbi Zera accepted the invitation, came back in, oh, Rabbi Abba didn't, he left. Loyal, he didn't come in, he left. Okay, so once inside, Yasi, they were sitting, coming, boiled, were discussing this very question. We know that Rebbe passed in one way, then he passed in the other way. Which one was the last one? Haim Minayu Achrisa, which one was the final ruling? Amalur Abzera, Abzera says to him, 
Ooh, what a pity. Lishvaktenli. The Shaile Lasaba, a pity that I didn't have the chance to ask the elder, meaning uh, my, my colleague, Rab Chia, uh, sorry, Rab Abba, Rab Chia Abba, who was standing with me outside. I missed the opportunity, Lasaba. I could have asked him, Dilma Shamir Le Perhaps he had this information from his father, Vavomid Rab Yechanan, his father heard it from Rab Yechanan because he was very close to him and they you know, spent a lot of time learning. What a pity I could have asked him. So Rab Chia Bar Abba, he had a practice. Every 30 days, he would re- review all his learning with his Rabbi Rabbi, Rabbi, with, with Rabbi Yechina. Okay, in any case, what's the bottom line? Without a question, here comes a right. The Shalach Rabbi Lazar, look at the sent the message to Goyla, to Babel. Hoira Rabbi Rabmeir. Rabbi concluded like Rabmeir. That's an Avela. Asked the Gemara about Rabban Nami Uri, but we know that he also ruled like the Rabban El Alash Mamina. Apparently, this is the conclusion. Hadach Rizish Mamina. We can conclude from this that, in fact, the final ruling was like Rav Meir, a shkita of a cherishet of a cotton unsupervised, is treated like a novella regarding all matters. Next Mishnah. Shachat Meir Chayis Makam Echad. He did a shkita on a hundred Chayis in the same location. Does he have to do a separate covering per animal? No. Kis Echad Lekul and he waits until he's done, and one big soil covering for all. Likewise by birds, Meir Eifetz Makam Echad does a hundred birds in the same spot. Kis Echad Lekul when he's done, one coverage. What if it's a chaya ve'oif ve'makemech the chaya and a bird in the same place? Once again, coin to the chachamim, one kisoi kisa echad lekulin. Rabbi Daim, no, in this case, two different types. Each one needs its own personal kisa. Shechad chaya chasana. Shechad chaya covers that first, and then v'chakach shulze oif does a oif and shechad that as well. Turn around, banan. So we have the pasuk which says that a person will shechad a chaya, a oif, asher yachel, right? So the word Chaya in the Torah, Torah about Chaya, Kal, Mashma. Uh, chaya, the, the Chaya, despite it being a Lashin Yachar, a singular term, Kal Mashma Chaya. It applies any, any number of Chaya, meaning whether it's many, whether it's a few, whether it's one, Bein Meruba, whether it's a lot, or Bein Metas, or few, or one. Likewise, the word oif is all encompassing. It can mean one, it can mean a million. Kal mashma oif, be meruba be umemuot. Okay, so just like by the chayat, be meruba be muetes, by the oif as well, be meruba be umemuot, in which case, mikan armud, this is uh, what the mission is based on. So based on this, we say, shachat mea chayis makam echa, did a hundred shchites in the same spot, kisa echa dekulam, one kisa for all. Mea oif is makam echa, likewise, a hundred birds in the same spot, one kisa echa dekulam. What about Chaya Vaif Makam Echad, a Chaya and a bird in the same spot? Once again, the Kisayach Lekul and one covering for both. Rabbi the Aimer, no, a Chaya needs its own, and so does a bird. Rabbi the Aimer, Shachat Chaya Yechasana. Vachachach, and then Shalit Saif, he shechs the bird and covers it separately. Why? Why do we separate Chaya from Oif? Shanema, because the Pasuk says Chaya Oi Oif. A Chaya or a bird. The word Oi is a separator to tell you that Chaya needs its own Kisay separate from Oif. Amr Loi, Sachacham responded, how are you, Oymah? But look at the Pasuk. Nevesh kol basar, dami b'nafshihu. Now, how is this a fitting res- response? It sounds like a cryptic response to what Rabbi Yehuda was saying. We'll get to that in a minute. Maika mahadri lay. How are they responding to Rabbi Yehuda's position? He's saying, look, Oy means separate. And they responded with this Pasuk, which doesn't seem to have any um, reference to this question. Maika mahadri lay. Hachik amrli rabban. This is what the Rabban had in mind. You're based on oi. Oi is a separator. No, hi oi me boy the chalik. The oi is needed to tell you something else. Don't think that kisu yadam is only required when one does shkita and chaya and a bird. Comes a pasuk and says chaya, either a chaya or a bird. So whichever one you do requires kisu. But it doesn't mean to say that if you happen to do both, you have to separate them. Rabbi the chalik medami nafka. Rabbi responded by saying, look. To tell you that each one alone needs its own kisui. That's learned from the word damai. The Pasuk says the Shafach is damai, which is singular. If you shecht a chai, you have to cover it, even without shechting a bird as well. And likewise, if you shecht a bird, right? So, what then is the word ay for? It's available to tell you that when you do choose to shecht both, you have to cover them separately. Rabbi Lechalak Midami Nafk. No, on that, Rabbana came back and said, hold it. Damai doesn't necessarily mean singular. 
Rabbanon Dome, the word Dome Tuva Mashma is a general term for all bloods, even many. The Chsiv, as we find in that passage that they quoted, Ki Nefesh Kol Basho Dome Benaf Shehu. That the Nefesh, the life of a, of, a, of a living being, is embedded in the, um, in the flesh, in the blood, in the flesh, right? So Kol Basho is everything, all species. So you see that the word Domei isn't necessarily singular. Okay, so then, back to the passage of Kisi Adam, V'shefachos Domei, Domei doesn't teach us. Lechalek, it won't tell us anything about whether you need to shech to Chaya and Oif to be obligated or not. Rather, you have to go to Oi to tell you that whether it's a Chaya or, or a Oif requires Kisi. So that passage Oi is unavailable. To tell you the next halacha, that in fact he chooses to do both chaya and oif, that he has to cover them separately. But Rabbi disagrees. He says a uh, chaya deserves its own and a uh, oif its own. Amram Chanina comes up Chanina and adds a point. What about regarding a bracha? You know, you shechta the chaya, you made a bracha, right? Ashkita, you cover the uh, the dam, you re- you proceed to the oif. Do you need to make a new bracha on the shechita of the oif? Do we say it's a continuous experience because the kisi of the chaya's blood? It was not really a hefsek. It wasn't really an interruption. It's all sort of one experience. Rabbi would agree in bracha regarding repeating a bracha on the shechit of the bird. He did not repeat a bracha. One bracha at the outset when he started the chaya covers the bird as well. It's all one experience. Amar le Ravina, so Ravina turned le Rav Achabe de Rav. Amar le Samsei was a Rachabe de Rav who asked le Ravashi, why? Why is one bracha sufficient? You interrupt it. You made a hefsek. Why is it sufficient in the story of the Rav's Talmidim who sat down to have a meal? The Rav Bruno, Rav Hanano, they were Talmidim de Rav. Havi Yasu B'Sadas was sitting having a meal. Koim Alai, who was serving them? Rav Eva Saba. Rav Eva Saba was serving. Amar le Samsei, they asked him, Hav le Baruch. Okay, um, we're going to bench. Could you pass, please uh, pour the uh, the glass, the, the, the you know the the cup for the wine for Bichas Hamazon? And then they changed their mind. They said, "Okay, want to have another drink of wine?" How do Amrulay? Then they turned on. They said, "Oh, one second, have Lishti, come. Uh, could you serve us another uh, glass of wine to drink?" Oh, too late. They have to make a new bracha because they sort of concluded the meal. Once they made that declaration that we're going to bench, meal's over. They have to. Uh, they're required to make a new bracha on the new glass of wine. Amulah Rav Yeva Saba, so the uh, Rav Yeva turned to him, he says, Sure, here's the wine, but make a new bracha. Ahoy Amulah Rav, Rav had taught us, Kivadamar Hav Levarach, once he declares his intention to make a bracha sambazan, that's the conclusion of the meal, it's a little mishti chamri, can't drink more wine without a new bracha, chanami. So back to our story. Kivan it for little kisi once. He turns and does the kisi adam after shechting the chaya. He chayv lele bracha. So when he goes back and he resumes the shechit of the bird, that triggers a new bracha. It's a new experience. So why do we say otherwise? It says the more big difference. How he asked, how could compare two stories? We turn to the next page. How some in the case of the meal mishta ubruchi, drinking wine during benching you can't do. Ba'de adali together as one lay after you can't. Do it simultaneously. So they're mutually, mutually exclusive. They can't coexist. So when you declare your intention to do Berchaz HaMazin, you're disengaging from eating and drinking. And when you have a change of heart, you make a new brach. Hacha, but over here by the Yishchit and the Kisi Adam, I mean, it takes talent, but technically you could <laughs> cover the blood with one hand and do Shechit on the bird with the other hand. So they're not contradictory. Hacha, Efsha, the Shachat Bechada, you can do Shechit with one hand, the Machsi Bechada, and Machsi Bechada, cover with the other hand. And therefore, it's not considered a hefsik, even if you choose to do it, uh, you know, sequentially. Because technically, they uh, they can happen together. It's not considered a hefsik. Right? It's not considered a disengagement from the shechit experience if, in fact, you aren't really compelled to stop. She says, Kol, kol shata zman shchita, the, the zman, the shchita experience just continues without interruption. Okay, so in a nutshell, we discussed the power of a tzaddik to protect his environment. You know, it reminds me of the story of the first Belzerav when he was um, looking for a rav there and he was hired to be the, the rav. 
and he was a low-key person. He sat in this corner of Big Tzaddik and learned in Davin. Uh, they had a five-year contract with him, and uh, when it was over, some of the uh, townspeople were not very uh, keen on, you know, renewing his contract. They said, we were, you know, expecting a more charismatic, you know, outgoing person. Here he's, I mean, all due credit, I mean, you're sitting and learning, great, 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 but uh, we needed somebody more exciting. So he says, listen, I'm not going to advise you, but I can just tell you one thing. I have a question. He says, within the last five years, were there any calamities in town? Any fires broke out? Any thieves arrived? Any mishaps? He said, no. He said, okay, you see, the Kayach of Torah, the power of Torah, the power of Kedusha, does have an effect, and that's my way of uh, of, of, of reaching out and and, uh, and accomplishing, and they renewed his contract. <laughs> okay, we discussed the um, status of the Shechita, the Cheir Shaita, the Katan, unsupervised. Going to Ramea, it's absolutely in Avela. Going to Chacham, we go to Chumrah, and the Pesach is like Ramea. One can do one kisay on a hundred animals. What about chayav oif that uh, is subject to machlekes? But either way, when it continues on with the uh, bird after recovering the chayav's blood, no new bracha is required. All the best, you're not